Greetings and welcome back to another edition of the End Time Watchman. The title of our program today is Hear From Me For Yourself. And this is a word from God himself. He says to hear from me for yourself. Uh, the book of John chapter 10 and verse 27 says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Jesus' words. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they what? Follow me. They follow Jesus. My sheep, each and every one of us, we are his sheep. He is our shepherd. And he's just showing us here that we should know his voice we should know his voice as he knows us and we will we should follow him not follow man not follow um, ideas uh, imaginations uh, other people's uh, you know uh, words and stuff like that but follow him follow God follow Jesus this should be our ultimate aim you know this word it, it came to me uh, last evening as I was reading and getting ready to share the word for today by Bob and uh, Debbie Gass and it you know it just the topic just jumped out at me and uh, the Lord said to me just to share this very topic with his people today hear from me for yourself it is very important it is a very important message as you know many of us we can and we are being some of us are being led off the path that God wants us to be on you know God has a path for each and every one of us he, you know this has been decreed even before the world began and this is scriptural God has already laid out a path for each and every one of us and it is and it is for each and every one of us to seek to know what that path is that is why he's telling us today to hear from him for yourself hear from him for yourself don't depend upon somebody else to to to, to bring a message to you because that is a very dangerous thing to do. You know, using a middleman is not always the best uh, way to go because the message being delivered can always, you know, can easily uh, be changed, uh, you know, to something else that was not really intended. And so it is best to go directly to the source. It's always the better bet to go directly to the source to get what you need and this is why God again is saying to us come to him come to me come to me and hear from me for yourself you see when you're not doing what God wants you to do as an individual uh, you're not walking in his will and you know that's a very dangerous place to be why because the book of Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 it says not everyone who calls out to me Lord Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven only those who actually do the will of my father in heaven will enter only those who do the will of God will enter heaven this is very serious so you know, it's a question you should always be asking yourself. Am I in the will of God? You know, I go to church every Sunday. I worship and I pray and I do this and I do that. But am I in the will of God? Because it does all the other things, they are very good. But this verse is telling us that only those who do the will of the Father will enter heaven. It's a very serious thing and something that we have to make sure that we really pay special and close attention to. The fact is that you could be a very faithful uh, you know, church member and very loyal to your pastor or your church leader, whoever that may be, you know, doing everything that he or she tells you 
to do and yet you could still be completely out of God's will. Why? Because you're listening to other people and not to God. Maybe God is trying to show you something, but you say, oh, I, I you know, I, my, my, my church leader, you know, is very, very, very gifted. And, you know, I, I believe that I can go and hear a word from God from them. You know, there's nothing wrong with getting a word from someone else, from your church leader or whoever. But, again, we have to hear God for ourselves. Why? Because our church leaders, they're humans too. And they too can make mistakes. It doesn't matter what title they carry. It does not matter how gifted they are. They are humans and they are prone to make mistakes like each and every one of us. Or maybe they may have the very best of intentions. But because of the flesh, things can easily go wrong. And so it is always best to go to the source for yourself. Go to God. To hear God for yourself. Even if you get a word from someone, always seek God for yourself to hear God for yourself. Let what someone else comes to tell you about what God said to you be a confirmation of what you have already heard and not just pick up just because this person is gifted or this person is this or that that you just hold on to what they say and run with it not knowing if it's really from God or it is from these people. Maybe they have an agenda and they feel that they need to pull in you or someone else or whoever. But it may not be what God wants it to be. Not because you are in this church and you're under this person, you have to do or follow them step by step, each and every step of the way. You know, all of us, we all want to get to heaven. That's the final destination. And we all have a path to walk. Just picture yourself in, 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 a, in your church and you know you have your rows of chairs or pews or whatever you have. And if you are at the front and you want to get to the back, if you, if you really look at it, there are so many different ways, path that you can use. To get to the back you can either just go straight down the center hall and get to the back or you can go around to the right side to get to the back or the left side to get to the back or you can divert through the pool the, the pews or the chair rows to get to the back they are different parts and this is uh, how we are all uh, destined to walk each and each and every one of us uh, you know, we have a, a path to walk. It may not be the same path as your church leader or your friend or your family member or whoever. That is why we have to seek God and ask God, God, where do you want me to go? Because he has laid out a path for you. And on that path, he has put people or places or things in that path for you. For your, for his glory and of course, but they are there for you to help you or for you to help them or whatever the case is. Each and every one of us have our own path to walk. And yes, it is very possible that the same, that uh, you could be walking the same path as someone else. But always make sure, the point is, make sure that you hear from God for yourself on where you need to be, where you need to go. Our main aim and priority should always be to follow God, to follow Jesus, and not necessarily man. I know the, the scripture tells us, as Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Uh, that is all well and good, yes, but uh, we have to realize that back in that day, that they did not have all the information that we have now about Jesus and what about Christ and about what he wants uh, from us and what he expects from us. And so, yes, we can follow, uh, you know, good examples as they follow Christ, but ultimately, always our priority should be to follow Jesus, to follow Jesus. We have all the information. We have the word of God. We have the Bible. 
where we can go to to find out everything that we need to find out so that we can follow Jesus. So let that be priority for you today. This is what God wants uh, you to understand today. That you need to hear from him for yourself because you can. That way was made clear for you. When that veil was torn from top to bottom, that is what happened. The way was made clear for each and every individual to approach God for themselves. We don't need to go uh, to a middleman. We don't need to go to anybody else to hear, to hear from God. We can hear God for ourselves. And this God, you know, especially in these last days, it is very important for us to hear God for ourselves so that we will not be led astray or led off the path that God intend uh, for us to be on. It's very important for us to seek God for ourselves and to hear from him for ourselves. John chapter 12 and verse 26 says, anyone who wants to serve me must follow me because my servants must be where I am and the Father will honor anyone who serves me want to serve Christ you have to follow him follow him follow him he never said to follow anybody else he's saying to you to follow him so let that be our aim today our main priority to follow Jesus Christ and before I come to a close I want to reach out as usual to those of you who may be watching or listening uh, who are not yet saved or have not yet received salvation from Jesus Christ. Time is running out. Time is uh, fast spent. And, you know, time as we know it, the world as we know it, will soon come to an end. Judgment Day is coming. And the decisions that we make in this life will determine where we end up when we cross over into eternity. All of us, we need salvation if we want to get to heaven. Without salvation, we will end up in hell for all eternity. And we have spoken about hell and heaven uh, a lot on this program. You know, the two places, they're, 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 they're total opposites. Where one, heaven, is a place of total happiness, bliss. No pains, no crying, no, nothing to worry about. And hell, of course, is the total opposite, where everything will be disastrous. It is all about torture, it's all about pains, and weeping and gnashing of teeth, where, uh, of course, there, there, there'll be no relief from it as well. And it, it goes on forever, for all eternity. But God is showing you these two, and he's telling you, listen, choose for me that you can get to heaven. And this is what God is showing you today that salvation is necessary that what Jesus did on the cross over 2,000 years ago is what paid the price for you to get to heaven you know the scripture tells us in Romans chapter 3 verse 10 that no one is righteous not even one why verse 23 of that chapter says for everyone has sinned we all fall short of God's glorious standard that is why Jesus had to do what he did over 2,000 years ago this is why we need to go and uh, come to Jesus to surrender our lives to him so that he can give us he can his salvation he can save us and you know wash us with the blood that he shed on the cross to wash away all of our sins so that we can enter the gates of heaven Romans chapter 6 and verse 22 tells us what the penalty for sin is. It says, for the wages of sin is death. Bad news, but the good news follows in that same verse. It says, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And note that it tells us it's a free gift. It's nothing that we uh, need to earn. It's a gift. Like we, you know, we are in the Christmas season now, Christmas coming on to us very soon, and I'm sure a, a lot of us will receive gifts. When you receive a gift, you know, you don't have to give the person 
money for it. You don't have to pay them for what they're giving you because it's a gift. They, they, they themselves purchased it and, uh, uh, and are giving it to you for free. This is uh, the same uh, with salvation. Christ purchased salvation. He paid the high uh, price of it for you and he wants to give it to you. All you need to do is to open up and receive it. That is how easy uh, how easily you can receive salvation today. And the offer is open. The window of opportunity is open for each and every one of us to receive salvation. All we need to do is to come to Jesus and surrender to him. Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 to 10, it tells us, uh, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Verse 10 says, For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by uh, uh, openly declaring your faith that you are saved. And that's all. Voice it. Believe it. And you will, will receive it. Not maybe or might, you will receive it. It is not a question to ponder over. It is a certainty. The Bible says you will receive it. And of course, it does not matter who you are, where you come from, or what you have done in the past. You call to Jesus today and he will hear you. That is why it says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone, no one is exempted. Jesus Christ, he is our light. He himself says in the book of John chapter 12 and verse 46, he said, I have come as a light to shine in this dark world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark. All who put their trust in Jesus Christ will never stay in the dark. You can step out of the darkness right now and come over into the light where you can see the way ahead. And Jesus Christ is offering this to you today. So don't turn your back. Don't turn the deaf ear. I know the world have a lot to offer, but the world and everything that it, that it offers is dying. It is dying away. It does not last forever, but what Christ has for you will last forever. And it is so, so much better than anything you can have in this world. So I don't allow the world to entice you any longer, but come away, step out from the world and come to Jesus. Surrender your life to him and uh, let him guide you along the way until he comes for us to take us to heaven. And on that note, I'll come to the end of our program for today. I want to thank you for joining. Thank you for listening and watching. And I'll see you next time, if there is a next time. God richly bless you and goodbye. Don't forget that to contact me for any reason, you can find me on Facebook by searching for Curtis Minister Roach. Minister Curtis Roach. Or our page, The End Time Watchman. Just leave me a message and I'll reply at my earliest. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel and be blessed by the hundreds of videos available to you. Please feel free to share any video to help us spread the good news of Jesus Christ. You can also follow me on Twitter at Roach underscore Curtis. Should the Lord continue to tarry, see you next time. God bless. Yeah, it's coming. Don't get left behind. Don't get left behind. Uh huh.